Commander Masters is just a few weeks away from hitting shelves and hurting wallets. Spoiler season has come to a close for this upcoming premium product. What? It's not a premium product. Sorry, sorry, sorry. For this upcoming regular product, and while many reprints contained within are admittedly quite stellar, is the chance to pull them really worth the eye-gouging prices of $295 for a draft box and $380 for a set booster box? <laughs> no, of course not buy singles. I mean, what are you, like taking crazy pills or something? There isn't even a one-of-one one Ristic study in those collector boosters. So why the hell would you buy boxes and boxes of them? You know, the saddest thing about Commander Masters is how the ridiculously high price has damaged the image of an otherwise amazing collection of cards and really cool treatments. There's a lot of really great Commander staples that were reprinted in this set. In fact, if you watch my video about the most needed reprints in Magic the Gathering from just a few months ago, most of what I talked about in that video got reprinted here. But regardless of how much they're charging for a booster box, prices on the individual cards are going to drop, and drop like a rock in a few weeks when this set hits shelves. If you're going to buy singles, you might want to know which high-priced cards to keep an eye on for falling prices. Presented here are the top eight most expensive cards to be reprinted in Commander Masters, what their prices have come down to as of the filming of this video, and where those prices may yet go and why. Please note, this video will be showing you the prices of cards before they were announced as a reprint in Commander Masters, or as close to that announcement as our frantic writers could grab. I'm not talking about the value of rare treatments you could pull in those collector booster packs, just what top-priced cards got reprinted in the set. For my usual Is It Worth It To Buy video, you'll have to wait until release date as usual. There really were a lot of overpriced and underprinted cards that finally got reprinted into Commander Masters. So much so that looking at the top eight most expensive cards to be reprinted, I had to omit some of the biggest names in Commander. Craterhoof Behemoth got reprinted at last, but at $25 each before its reprint, that didn't make the list. Nor did its partner in ubiquitous game finishers, Finale of Devastation, a card going for $33.71 and every bit as in need of a reprint. Nor did Archfiend of Despair or Kindred Dominance. Both reprinted at last and both $25 and $31 respectively. Even Land Tax and Cyclonic Rift, two more $30 staples, are not even on this list. Though they are in each and every Commander deck in white and blue, and that might be part of the problem. But that's another video. And not even the legendary Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, its price ceaseless increasing, all the way to 32 bucks and 76 cents, not even that could crack into our top eight. All of these cards are all-stars in Commander, and now, thanks to them being reprinted in Commander Masters, their prices are likely to go down hard and fast as soon as the set hits shelves. But if such collections of Commander staples did not even crack into our top eight, what did? Here are the actual top eight most expensive cards to be reprinted into Commander Masters. Ah, summer, the laziest time of the year, when school kids have a chance to forget everything they have learned and parents who don't have the summer off attempt to still complete their regular jobs with complaining kids underfoot. Where going outside feels like stepping into an oven and the idea of cooking a dinner leaves you with a sense of creeping dread. <laughs> so thank goodness for today's sponsor, Factor. This July, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Factor offers lots of delicious options each week to fit a variety of lifestyles, from keto to calorie smart, vegan plus veggie and protein plus. Prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians, each meal has all the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long while meeting your goals. And you know, if you're looking to mix it up, you can add protein 
protein to select vegan and veggie meals each week. I really like Factor, especially in the summer. After a long day at work, the last thing I want to do in a hot day is stand over a hot stove. With Factor, I have meals that meet my goals, waiting for me and my family, and ready in only two minutes. Seriously, it's a lifesaver. Factor is now owned by HelloFresh, and with a wide array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. When I have time, HelloFresh is great, and when I don't, Factor is there. Now you can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. Just head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code Tularian Community 50 to get 50% off. Wow, your first Factor box. Then you can actually be lazy this summer and, in the end, isn't maximizing laziness its own reward? Thank you, Factor, for sponsoring this video. So what are the top eight most expensive reprints in Commander Masters? Well, coming in at number eight is a card from my favorite Commander Precon, Cassetto Snakes. Although Azuri photobombed the face card for Commander 2015, so maybe you think of it as the Azuri deck. It's really the Cassetto deck. But either way, that card that was reprinted is Arachnogenesis. Arachnogenesis was up to as high as $59 a pop before being announced as a reprint in Commander Masters. Masters, and now that price is already down to $44.70. And it's dropping still. How low will it go? Well, hopefully lower, because this is a Commander All-Star. Arachnogenesis is an instant that costs two generic and one green mana. It states, create X, one, two green spider creature tokens with reach, where X is the number of creatures attacking you. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn by non-spider creatures. The great thing about this spell is that it does not prevent damage or spiders deal, so it can work as both a fog and even a board wipe if we are blocking creatures with toughness 1, or if there's an effect or two in play that pumps spiders. While Arachnogenesis won't be able to bring forth the raw power its cohort Ink Shield provides, the fact that it costs 2 less mana means it will always be a comeback fog worthy of consideration. And hey, great timing on this reprint too, giving Shalab just recently made spiders cool again. Number seven is a card whose reprint gives me hope, and that is Avacyn, Angel of Hope. But uh, not too much hope, as well, this was a $51.51 .51 card before being announced as an inclusion in Commander Masters. It is now only down a couple of bucks to $45 each. Avacyn is an iconic 8-8 legendary angel with flying, vigilance, and indestructible, who costs five generic and three white mana. She reads, other permanents you control have indestructible. And with such a simple line of text, one may need to actually experience Avacyn in the heat of battle to truly understand the power of mass indestructibility. With Avacyn out, the safety with which we can now send our attackers into combat unscathed comes in tandem with the safety they now provide us as indestructible blockers. And she amplifies far more than just creature strategies do, as her protection will help keep enchantment and artifacts online all the same. Trying to beast within my mana-doubling Miari's Wake or Caged Sun? Try again and fail again. Never mind she denies all the popular commander board wipes from Blasphemous Act to Wrath of God. And on top of all of that, Avacyn is a beastly 8-8 flying beater, which alone can bring games to clean conclusions. I do hope this reprint continues to see a decrease at her cost, as Avacyn is strong, but I don't think she's $45 strong. Number six on our list is another high-priced legendary, the Ur-Dragon. A card that was commanding a whopping $63.63 price tag before being reprinted and now, with the set not even out yet, is already down to 46 bucks. Nice. Though not that nice because it's still 46 bucks. I, I don't know. It's all relative. The Ur Dragon is a 10-10 legendary dragon with flying that costs four mana, one white, one blue, one black, one red, and one green to cast. It states eminence. As long as the Ur Dragon is in the command zone or on the battlefield, other dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever one or more dragons you control attack, draw that many cards, then you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Once on the battlefield alongside her dragon brood, and even some discounted changelings if we 
we so choose. My favorite part of the Ur Dragon's impending attack trigger is that we aren't limited by what type of permanent we can put into play. It doesn't have to be a dragon. We can choose anything from an artifact that gives us long-term value like chromatic orrery to an enchantment that will give us sudden, devastating lethal damage like City on Fire. The Ur Dragon has seen only one secret layer reprint, and because of its raw power and incredible popularity with dragon enthusiasts, the price of a copy may drop temporarily with Commander Masters, but it is likely to go back up again unless it sees many more reprints, which I certainly hope that it does. Number five is one of many cards that I said needed a reprint in my Commander Masters prediction video, and I'm glad to see that it got it. Fierce Guardianship, a card that has gone as high as $58.46 each, is now down to, wow, $35.65. What a drop. Keep going, baby. I'm actually going to name all five of the Aquaria free spells here, tied at the number five spot, even though some certainly command a higher price than others. I'm just happy to see all of them reprinted and none of them upshifted to Mythic. Obscuring Haze, Lawless Maneuver, Deadly Rollick, Fierce Guardianship, and Deflecting Swat, also known as the Aquaria free spells, each include the critical line of text. If you control a commander, you may cast this spell without paying its mana cost. And so in almost every case, we can cast these spells, we will indeed be spending zero mana to do so. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. These cards never should have been made in the first place, but since they were and we're stuck with them, they always should be reprinted into the ground inside each and every Commander Precon. But since they weren't and never will be, I'm glad to see them here. I'm glad we did not see an upshift to Mythic. Deflecting Swat is now down to $36.68, another great drop from $55.76. Deadly Rollick has crashed down to below 20 bucks at only $17.98. My God, I never thought I'd be happy to see a nearly $20 Commander staple, but here we are. Wasn't this supposed to be the casual format? Anyway, the card was $41.11 before being announced as a reprint. Imagine if they had just reprinted these inside of Commander Precon several times. They'd probably be a couple bucks each. On the the lower end of the cycle, Flawless Maneuver was only $10.29 before being reprinted. And it's not gone down much as it's now $7.40, but that may continue to decrease once Commander Masters hits the shelves. And last but certainly least, Obscuring Haze, the least valuable of the bunch. It was only $4.39 before its reprint and now at $1.89 each, won't even register on the booster box game. Number four is a card that should have been reprinted a long time ago. Well, I suppose that applies to all the cards on this list, but nonetheless, it applies doubly, perhaps even triply, for the Great Henge, costing the very extremely not nice $69 before being reprinted. The Great Henge has now dropped to a still way too expensive $48.08. For seven generic and two green mana, the Great Henge is a legendary artifact that states, this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Tap to add two green mana. Okay, sure. Why not? You gain two life. Uh, 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 all right, all right, that's good too. Wait, there's more. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, wow, we're getting a little... Oh, wait, there's even more. And draw a card. Sure, why not? Just draw a card. Only one, Great Henge? Only one card? Why not five? As you can see, what makes this card so undeniably powerful is how we are are rewarded for doing what our creature decks want to do anyway. The Great Henge essentially rewards us for playing the game. Big creatures, check. Card draw, check. Plus one, plus one counters, check. Ramp, check. Oh, and life gain, hey, why not? Check. Is it any wonder I've previously touted this card as the best green artifact in Magic? And today, I easily stand by that claim. What really worries me is what will happen to this card's price if it doesn't get reprinted again until Commander Masters 2. I mean, they're certainly not gonna put it in pre-cons, so where's it gonna go? $4 booster packs when we return to Eldraine? <laughs> oh, my sweet summer child. Coming in at number three is another card I feel never should have been printed in the first place, but also, now that it has been, probably should be reprinted a lot more often. And that card is Jeweled Lotus. I am not a magic boomer. This card is just, ah, look, I'll admit, it is gorgeous in all its artwork. But at $76.92 before being reprinted, you gotta be kidding me. Now down only to $68.93, this card is still too expensive. And it's not something I even bothered 
a proxy. Why is that? It's too much of a good thing. For zero mana, zero. Jeweled Lotus is an artifact that states, tap, sacrifice Jeweled Lotus, add three mana of any one color. Spend this mana only to cast your commander. Hey, that's a Black Lotus, but for commander. It's a commander Black Lotus. It's literally a Black Lotus, but you can only use it for commander, on your commander. It's a Black Lotus for casting the most important card in your deck that you always have access to, which as stated is the commander. So does the price point match the power level? In this case, uh, I'm not gonna say yes, but yeah, I guess. With just a land and a jeweled lotus in our opening hand, we can cast any of the 205 four mana value monocolored commanders on turn one. And you thought Soul Ring was bad? You didn't? That's just me again? Well, imagine a jeweled lotus, a land, and a soul ring are in our opening hand. That's now any five cost monocolored commander that we can cast on turn one. But hey, let's take it another step further. Let's imagine a soul ring, a dark ritual, a swamp, and a jeweled lotus are in our opening hand. Hey, a turn one Toxrill, the corrosive, never hurt anybody, right? I'm sure a turn one Belladross Witherbloom is fine too. That's nice balanced magic, right? Just like the jeweled lotus. Nice and balanced. It's amazing that they reprinted even more expensive cards than these. We're up to the top two most expensive cards to be reprinted in Commander Masters. Number two, let's see. Is it wild that our number two spot is an $84.39 card and that still is not the most expensive reprint in Commander Masters? But can you guess what it is? It used to be included in $4 Battle Bond packs, but now it's here in Commander Masters and it's doubling season. It's dropped in value down to $72.24, and I think that really speaks to its power because doubling season has actually been reprinted several times now. Doubling season is an enchantment that states if an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. And if an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many of those counters on that permanent instead. Any deck that creates tokens as its strategy wants a doubling season, as does any deck empowering creatures with counters, as does any deck that relies on planeswalkers, because as a planeswalker enters the battlefield, we're required to put an amount of loyalty counters on it equal to its printed loyalty number. Doubling season does in fact consider placing those counters an effect, and thus it will double the amount of loyalty every planeswalker enters the battlefield with. This inherently shatters the balance of these cards, allowing planeswalkers to ultimate the first turn they come into play rather than being worked up towards over time. Actually, as I analyze this card further, I'm pretty sure it just says double our chances of victory on it. The amount of decks that would gleefully utilize this doubling effect is staggering, but not as staggering as its price. And still there was a much more expensive card to be reprinted. It's going to blow your mind if you're not already aware of it. What is the most expensive card that was reprinted in Commander Masters? Well, our number one card was going for $136.55, and that was for the cheapest available version, a reprinted version, a judge foil of all things, which didn't even command the price of the original, a whopping $408.33. I guess it goes without saying, our number one slot was a Portal card. Portal, of course, refers to the infamous Portal trilogy. These sets not only saw small print numbers, but they were never released in North America, and all of this resulted in so many cards of varying qualities to carry exorbitant financial value, most cards of which haven't even seen a reprint in nearly 24 years. Now, our number one card did see that singular Judge Foil reprint, but again, all that did was offer a $100 version of a $400 card. Now, thanks to being reprinted in Commander Masters, it's down to $55.47. That card is the Capture of Zhang Zhou. This is, hands down, the most expensive card to be reprinted in Commander Masters masters for a reason. For three generic and two blue mana, you get a sorcery that states, take an extra turn after this one. Lest you wish to play with a banned reserve list card, the rate and conditions required to take an extra turn simply don't come as hassle-free and straight to the point as the capture of Zhang Zhou. By itself, the extra turn provided can put us far ahead of our opponents, but alongside identical twins' temporal manipulation and time warp, we're guaranteed to seal the win as we pass all of our turns back to, well, our own turn. 
And this thing doesn't even exile itself like tons of modern extra turn spells do. So get ready to dust off your most deplorable blue mage self. But Commander Masters has other amazing portal cards reprinted within it. And now that they've been reprinted, their prices are coming down. Sun Quan, Lord of Wu, $64.29. Personal Tutor, $52.57. Loyal Retainers, $40.68. I'm including these in the number one slot because they are shared by the thematic link of being portal cards. And if I had individually given each card its own slot, most of our top five would have just been portal cards. All four of these cards premiered originally in 1997 and 1999, and have continued to be extremely rare cards with a lot of commander potential. I hope very much that their prices continue to decrease now that they have been reprinted here. Remember, no one knows what will happen to prices once this set hits the shelf, or how low those prices may or may not drop once they do. Even with expensive cards such as the ones I've highlighted here, not to mention the handful of honorary staples we covered that also got reprints, the best way to get a hold of these cards for the decks you want to play is not by ripping wrappers, but by buying singles. But whatever decks you like to play, whether it's Commander or Modern or even Popper and Pioneer, you can get games of Webcam Commander on the Telerian Community College Discord server, which is 100% free and has a team of help awesome mods to facilitate great games of Magic the Gathering. Just go to discord.telariancommunitycollege.com and start playing Webcam Commander for free today! 100% free! Hey, thanks once again to Factor for sponsoring this video. If you are looking for fast, easy, and delicious meals that are gonna be ready in two minutes or less, then Factor is what you are looking for. Just head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code TelariumCommunity50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Thank you, Factor, for sponsoring this video. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Today, it's something new with someone old. I've brought the gang back together to bring in their new commander decks. Yeah, my name is Lexi, otherwise known as Black Girl Mage. I have brought Kyler. My name is Voxy. I brought Yarrick the Desecrated. I, of course, am playing a brand new deck that I just got in the mail. It's Secret Layer Heads I Win, Tails You Lose. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and I'm playing Xanathar. And I'm not playing my deck, I'm playing yours. How this is gonna work is I'm just gonna take a peek here. I don't even you don't get to see. Oh, cool, Hornet Queen! No! Wow. <laughs> draw your attention to the fact that I have mined the battlefield. You don't have her mana! I didn't have to draw her attention to that. <laughs> what does the divinity counter do? I don't know. <laughs> what? I don't care. I'm going to destroy target artifact, whatever prof's thing is that you stole. <laughs> hey, that was mine. You're welcome for giving it back. <laughs> but it's in my graveyard. I'll pass it to, well, you're welcome, pass the turn. <laughs>